Okay, hi. Uh, so I wanted to uh, take a few minutes to talk about um, what are called med legal appointments. Those, so those are AMEs or QMEs. So um, what's an AME? What's a QME? That's a really great question. Um, an AME is an agreed medical evaluator. So this is someone that the parties um, have agreed to. Uh, these are typically doctors that have a very good reputation in the community of being very neutral, being very fair, not tending to um, uh, really side with one side versus the other too much. They, they tend to be doctors that kind of call it like they see it. So these are doctors who are very well respected, who have a lot of knowledge of work comp, a lot of knowledge of the law, um, you know, so, uh, so that's how those doctors are selected. If the parties can't agree to an AME or don't want to use an AME or it's just not a good case for an AME, sometimes we'll go to what's called a QME, a qualified medical evaluator. So that QME is someone who's selected from the state. So the process for that is kind of an interesting process. So the state of California gives us a list of three names. And so then we go through that list and we say, eh, I don't like this, this name. And we'll mark off one of those doctors. And then the other side does the same thing. So the other side looks at the list and says, I don't like that doctor. I want to mark that doctor off. And whoever tends to be the least offensive doctor of the bunch is the doctor that becomes the QME for the case. And so um, it, no matter what label you put on that doctor, no matter what hat you put on that doctor, what we really need to be thinking of that doctor as a, is a neutral doctor. So this is a doctor who is really going to kind of come in and just call the balls and call the strikes and that sort of thing. Um, so there's a lot of work that goes into these appointments uh, on our office's behalf, but um, you know, to, to try to get our clients to this stage. But when for our clients, there's a couple of things that um, our clients need to know before the appointment um, that are going to really help set them up for success. And so um, a couple of things. Sometimes you may find that you get some paperwork from the doctor's office a little early. So you may um, get some paperwork either emailed to you or sent via mail. That's pretty common. Sometimes they'll have you fill it out the day of. That's also pretty common. Um, if you do get it sent early, go ahead and fill it out. So you have you can spend some good quality time getting um, the answers filled out. If you get stuck on something, you get the opportunity to give us a call and we can help you, especially with some of the um, factual information about your case. When they're asking for you know, claims number or something like that, you can give us a call and we'll help you fill any of that out that you need. So definitely recommend filling anything out ahead of time. So you're not nervous before the appointment, like trying to, to get the paperwork filled out before they call you back. That's always a real stressful situation, so you can avoid it that way. The other thing is you wanna make sure that you arrive to that appointment early. Um, I would recommend at least 15 to 20 minutes. And um, you wanna make sure you're allowing ample time for traffic and to park. Sometimes, you know, if it's a really big doctor's office, you may have to park in a structure that's pretty far away. Um, you may get lost the day of the appointment. If you're like me, sometimes you may drive around a little lost. And so that extra padding will help make sure that you get there on time and that you're there and, you know, just sitting waiting for your appointment when the doctor comes in. Now, that being said, me telling you to be early to the appointment, you should also expect the doctor to be late to this appointment. Um, you should not expect this appointment to start on time, and you should expect to be there for a very, very, very long time. Um, these are not quick appointments where you can run in and out in 20 minutes. You should really anticipate being there at least several hours. So I always recommend to the client, our clients to bring um, uh, bring a fully charged cell phone, <laughs> you bring a book to read, bring a bottle of water, and bring a snack because you may be there for a little bit. Um, you know, it's not unusual for these appointments to take at least half of the day. That's more common than it is not. So, you know, just definitely plan to be there um, early, plan to stay a long time, and um, I get really angry when I get hungry, so I always try to, you know, make sure to remind people, if you're like me, take a snack because you, you very well may need it when you're there. Um, now, this doctor's opinion is probably one of the most important doctors that are going to evaluate you on your case, and so it's really important that we put our best foot forward. And so, if you get 
be a little annoyed at the doctor for um, being light or for maybe not having the best bedside manner. Just really try to put your best face on and just kind of smile through it. I know that's frustrating because sometimes you just want to tell people how you feel. It's not going to help us. It's not going to do us any favors. So really just in the event that that does happen, just, just try really hard to, you know, pretend like it's not bothering you because we don't want the doctor to get frustrated. We want the doctor to give you every benefit of the doubt and, and that sort of thing. So we definitely want to put our best, uh, best foot forward with that. Now, that being said, uh, for our clients that are going to orthopedics, um, no, neurologists, chiropractors, that if, if you're going to, to the neutral doctor that's in one of these specialties, you are going to have to do a physical evaluation, which means a lot of moving, a lot of bending, a lot of stretching, a lot of range of motion. So you need to wear comfortable clothes. So you want to make sure that you are wearing clothes that you can move in. So comfortable clothes, you know, like that you would almost like go to go to the gym or go to work out in are actually really good. You don't want to wear clothes that restrict your movement in any way that are going to prohibit you from being able to kind of give your best um, effort, you know, in these evaluations. So make sure you wear comfortable clothes. Um, I would recommend tennis shoes. Don't wear anything like a sandal, definitely no high heels, things of that nature so that you're, you know, on flat, comfortable feet the whole time. Now, this is a hard one, and I know uh, what I'm about to ask is a big ask, but I would really like it if you could maybe try to avoid uh, using pain medication or using um, anything like to help with inflammation for about 12 hours prior to the appointment. Now, that being said, I don't want you to stop using medication for other conditions like high blood pressure or diabetes, absolutely still take that stuff. But the reason that we ask specifically about the pain medication is because it gives us a false sense of what's really going on. So when you're in that doctor's office, I want the doctor to see what your everyday looks like medication free. So I don't know, you know, how other people feel, but if I my back is hurting me, if I take ibuprofen, an hour later, I'm fine, I can move around, everything is great. But it doesn't mean I wasn't hurting before that. It just means the medication is covering it up. So it's really important for me as your attorney to be able to have that doctor see you for truly how the injury is happening. So if at all possible, try to avoid taking pain medication for that purpose so that the doctor can really truly see your baseline without medication uh, interfering with it. Now, the doctor is going to ask you to do some stuff that is going to be physically uncomfortable because these tests are physically uncomfortable. I just want you to do your best. So, for example, if the if you have a hurt shoulder, the doctor is going to ask you to perform range of motion exercises. So, they're going to want to see how your shoulder is moving. And there's going to be some movements that probably don't hurt as bad as others. So if this movement doesn't hurt, yeah, go ahead, do that movement all day long. But there's going to be other movements that do hurt. It's going to be really important to have the doctor see you try your best. And so what you can do to share with that doctor where it's hurting and where it's not is you can say, okay, you know, this is starting to get uncomfortable, starting to get uncomfortable. Hey, doctor, this is bad. Um, you know, so as, as you start to move up, you can, you can share with the doctor where your pain levels are changing or increasing, but you do want to try your absolute best because we want the doctor to be able to give you the benefit of the doubt. And if the doctor thinks that you're being really honest with them and, you know, the doctor can see like how hard you're trying to participate in the appointment, they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. So it's really important that you, you try to, to do that. Now, they're also going to ask you about your medical history. Um, they're going to ask about this workers' comp case, prior workers' comp case, car accidents, slip and falls, degenerative problems, um, you know, just other injuries that you could have possibly had. And even if you had something that wasn't a real big deal, so let's say that you had a car accident a couple years ago and that car accident, um, you know, you, you had some whiplash and you had to go get a couple of sessions of therapy and then you were fine after. I still want you to talk about it when the doctor asks about you uh, or ask about your prior stuff, 
but you know, you can also explain, hey, it really wasn't that big of a deal. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to say, oh no, nothing happened. And then have the other side try to come in and blame it on this other prior injury that you had and the doctor be kind of blindsided not knowing about it. So it's always better to tell the doctor about all of your prior injuries, even if it wasn't really a big deal. You can explain that it wasn't a big deal, but it's better to, to give them the information so that they, they have it all when they ask you your medical history. Um, so a lot of my clients have questions about what's going to happen next, what's going to happen after this appointment. And that is a really great question. So typically these reports take anywhere from about 30 to 45 days to be generated. They are not your typical doctor's report. Um, you know, when you go to your doctor every 30, 45 days, we get a one, maybe two page report from that visit. It's really quick. Those reports get generated pretty fast. These are intense reports. It's not unusual for these reports to be over 50 pages long um, because it's a summary of your medical records. It's a summary of the doctor's visit while you were there and things of that nature. So really prepare to be patient because it will take a while for these reports to come in. Normally, these reports take on one of two different forms. So um, the doctor could say, hmm, you know, I don't think that this person is ready to be released from medical care yet. I think this person needs to go back and have this additional treatment and then come see me in a couple of months. And if that's the case, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to get you sent back to the doctors to get that kind of treatment done so that you can be released at a later date. But sometimes the doctor may say, well, I'm ready to release them now, and here's my final opinion. And so if that's the case, there could be quite a few things that happen right away just after this report is, is generated. So we we'll want you to be prepared for that. Um, if you are currently receiving checks from uh, the workers' comp insurance for what's called temporary disability, that status is going to change if the doctor issues a final report. Um, or uh, the same thing goes if you're receiving money from EDD, the state of California, for your disability payments. That status is going to change and you're not going to be eligible for those benefits once the doctor issues a final report for you. So I want you to be prepared for that. Um, so you definitely, there's no problem with you asking the doctor in the evaluation, hey, is this going to be a final report? They may not answer, you know, they may be a little cagey with you because some doctors don't feel as comfortable chatting about their findings as others, but it, there's nothing wrong with you asking that question. Um, but if the doctor issues a final report, temporary disability benefits are going to be stopping. So, um, you know, be in touch with us if you have further questions about that. But then it, when we get those final reports in, it's going to give us a chance to really go through uh, your case and do workups for settlement and then start talking to you about those those particular kinds of options. So we'll definitely be in touch after uh, the reports are generated so that we kind of know where we need to go from here. So the um, so that is it. You know, if you are one of this video was obviously intended for my clients or right? clients of Invictus Law. Um, and so if you have further questions about your case, absolutely give us a call so we can kind of go into it in more detail. This video is not intended to be legal advice for every single person in the state of California. If you are happen to be watching this and you're not a client of mine and you're not a client of Invictus Law, um, you should probably listen to whatever your own attorney has to say, but if you have further questions or you want to consult with us, you can, you can do so and we can kind of go into to more detail. But for our clients, if you have additional questions, absolutely give us a call um, and then we'll walk you right through any of those questions that you have. Uh, thank you so much and we wish you the best of luck at your QME or AME appointment.